Hey guys, if you like the content, please be sure to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here doing the first of many Born of the Gods drafts. Um, if you don't know what my strategy was at the end of the Theros, uh, just regular Theros drafts, it was red-white, primarily red-white. Even forcing red-white was fine. Uh, sharing cards with other red-white players didn't really matter all that much because mediocre red-white decks win in this format. I don't exactly know why. I kind of got a feeling it's just because the removal is so expensive, which is why aggro works so well, even when it's mediocre. The, the key thing to this format is you need a two-drop creature, you need a three-drop creature, and then a little bit of protection, and you should be able to get there. Heroic turned out to be super strong. Um... I've got 20 seconds left, so I'll quickly go through my mind on this pack. Um, archetype of Aggression is cool. Grave Robber Spider is good. Afara's Enlightenment is certainly interesting for Heroic. Um, I'm going to take the Bolt of Karanos. Not that it's great, but it's actual removal, and I am going to probably just continue forcing Red-White. Um, the only real sweeper, if you think about it, the only real sweeper in the entire format was uh, Anger of the Gods, formerly. Now with Born of the Gods, we've got Drown in Sorrow. So there is, in fact, another card that uh, hurts the aggressive, mediocre strategy. I keep saying mediocre because it really is. It can be, it can be, it, you can look at it and be like, this is the, one of the worst red-white decks I've ever seen, and I was winning drafts with it. And yet, I would draft, like, the sickest-looking mid-range deck you've ever seen, and I would go, like, 1-2. So I, I really have a feeling that the aggressive decks with a couple heroic guys, ideally, are the best strategy to win in this format. Unfortunately, because it doesn't open you up for a lot of different variety, but we'll see if uh, the addition of Born of the Gods proves me wrong or proves me right. Uh, another bolt, I think we're going to take over the shield main. I really like this guy a lot for um, getting heroic triggers off and bestow in general, cheap bestow. But uh, I can take another bolt here. That's fine. I mean, that's cheap removal. All right. Awesome. We get a uh, heroic guy here, I'm pretty sure. Reckless Reveler is fine, too. And a Crow and Phalanx is actually really cool. I think this card's really good. I think I'd rather just have the two-drop guy. Although, that's really awkward with the double red, admittedly. I think I might just have to live with it. Rise of the Challenge seems like an excellent trick. Uh, yeah, we're just going to take the heroic guy. Pretty happily. Uh, Phalanx is good, though. I think this would be an easy second pick in this pack. But Vanguard is actually just potentially very good. Okay. Next, got a shield mate. Uh, Lightning Volley is probably okay in the right deck. But yeah, let's take the shield mate here and start getting some nice little guys for heroic. Oh wow, got a good pack here. Well, we can take this two drop who's good, but I think we actually want the fall of the hammer. Uh, Fearsome Temper is excellent too. So good red white for us here, but fall of the hammer is like a one-sided pit fight. That seems excellent, really strong. So pretty, and I mean, you can't do it to players. Um, but the fact that it's like, just deal the damage of your creature to another creature, I, I feel like this card's super strong. So let's take it. Theros packs, hopefully we can get our cheap creatures we need. Alright, let's get the Sun Guide here, I think. Actually, this card's really good, um, in general. And I'm sure it's fine in this deck, but I do kind of want to ensure I get enough two drops, and this one seems like it's at least decent. Excoriate's probably fine too, but like I said, let's let's just focus on getting some good creatures right now. I do think Dawn to Dusk is an excellent spell. Um, currently, we can only get back a Nyxborn Shieldmate with it. I guarantee you we could find some more later, but I uh, I I just want to make sure. I mean, the key to making a successful <laughs> red-white deck. Just get a bunch of two and three drop creatures. 
just make sure you got enough. That's that's all you got to worry about. All right, uh, what's in here that's interesting? This guy's okay. This thing is interesting. Divination's always cool. Karametra's favor I'm intrigued with. And there's some other stuff in here. Scouring sands. This doesn't seem that good, but it's red, so let's cut it. Um, hmm. Neither of these are particularly amazing. But we could take the giants. I mean, 5 mana 5-5 five, five, or 5 mana deal 5, get a 3-3. Three, three. Likely not playing it, but I think we're actually more likely to play the giant over the hill gianty. Great heart. All right, Mortal, Mortal's Ardor is great. Happily getting that. Very surprised to see Grave Robber Spider uh, wheel. I think that card's really good. But let's take the Ardor. Um, here we can take the Oathsworn. Currently have a few things we could target it with. Uh, if for some reason we end up in green. And Heroic is, like I said, my... My personal favorite uh, ability in this format. All right, cool. So Griffin Dreamfinder is great for bringing back the Bestow guys, but that's not what this deck wants. I'm pretty sure this deck wants the Reveler. Uh, I want the Rise of the Challenge, too, actually. I really, really like that card a lot. But uh, am I going to get enough two drops if I do that? I'm not sure. Reckless Reveler has a bonus of uh, being able to uh, destroy all of the rare enchantment artifacts from Theros. So I kind of like it. Um, Radiance. Let's just continue to cut white and red whenever possible. We wield the Fearsome Temper, and that's just that makes me extremely happy. I think this card is very strong. It's uh, one of the key cards for this strategy, really. I mean, that... that Tart creature can't block this creature this turn. Ability on this, extremely strong. Uh, let's cut the white. Cut the radiances. We're not going to play them. Uh, anything else? Probably likely not to play that. I would prefer to not play the Faragax Giant if possible, but uh, I will if we're short on playable. So far, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we've gotten from the Born of the Gods pack. Uh, we're really, out of the Theros packs, we're really going to be digging hard for some Wingsteed Riders, and uh, favorite hoplites, stuff like that. Uh, arena athletes. The nice thing, I mean, the nice, the real nice thing about going into red white is you have access to tons of the heroic guys, particularly in white. But red too has a couple pretty awesome, um, pretty awesome heroic guys. Plus, we have a chance to get An uh, Anax and Siamid, which is arguably one of the best heroic guys you can get in limited. Okay, Theros pack, we've opened Thoughtseize. i got to check the price on that little bad boy real quick because these pre-release drafts are not cheap. Not cheap. What are you paying for Thoughtseize? Four, five, ah, I think i got to take it. Uh, sadly, I have to take it because I would love to just slam dunk this Phalanx Leader. That card is phenomenally strong. Um, possibly wheel, hopefully Ill-Tempered Cyclops. More likely, we'll wheel the Seder Rambler. There is a chance we wheel the Cyclops, so this I'd be extremely happy if we got that on the wheel. Um, sorry to take the tickets, but once again, these pre-release drafts are expensive, so I'd like to reap as much back as I can. Uh, but yes, if this were PTQ, you'd take the Phalanx Leader. Okay, a couple... Uh, couple great options for us here. The Arena Athlete and the Heliod's Emissary. Uh, Emissary in a vacuum, much stronger card. Arena Athlete much more fits in with what we're trying to do, which is slam a bunch of cheap creatures and then make their creatures unable to block. Um, that being said, I, I think I still take the Emissary. Even though it is a 4-drop, it's one of the... These Emissary cards are super strong. This one in particular, I love. It's probably one of my, if if not the best emissary, second best. For some reason, I'm kind of blanking on all of them right now. The blue one is like, you draw a card when you hit them. The 
black one is you can discard cards. The green one is trample. Um, yeah, I think we got to take the white one. But uh, I'm just going to cross my fingers that we table that arena athlete. Don't know how likely it is. It doesn't seem super likely, but it's, it's possible. All right. Options here. Well, I love the Arbor Colossus, but obviously we're not in those colors. So we actually have some real choices here. We've got Titan Strength, Fanatic, and God's, God's Willing. We also have Traveling Philosopher, which is a cool card. Uh, we don't have actually a lot of red permanents. We have red spells, but no real red permanents, which makes Fanatic less attractive. Uh, I think we want the Titan Strength. We're a damage aggressive deck, and Titan Strength, I always love to have just a quadrillion of these. The more the merrier. Um, we could see some two-headed Cerberus, and this card just gets outrageously over the top at that point. Uh, God's Willing is phenomenal, though. Um, I, I mean, I do want the Fanatic. I like it. I just think Titan Strength is going to be more the in line with what I like to do with the aggressive, the aggressiveness. All right. Um, nothing too spectacular for us here, unfortunately, out of this pack. I think we can go Raptor or we can go Portent. I think the Portents tend to go later than the Raptor, mostly because Raptor's an uncommon. Uh, don't really like the Raptor all that much, but we are still a little bit short on creatures, so I think I'm just going to just gonna take it. Uh, got the Portent anyway. If this temple were in line with any of our colors, I'd probably take it just for the scry. Uh, chosen by Heliod, I guess going to be the pick. Um, all right. Well, we've got some good options here. Currently, how many humans are we rocking? Here's one. Just one? All right, only one human, which makes the Pegasus less good. There are a lot of common ones, though, that we could ideally see. That being said, Stone Shock Giant is an amazing finisher. I think it's early enough where I can take Pegasus and not regret it. This card does win games, as, as saddened as I am by saying that. This card, uh, <laughs> with some of those cheap two and three drop humans, this, this card can just take the game over pretty rapidly. I think Stone Shock Giant's stronger, but I want to keep the curve down. We're going to take the Pegasus and open our eyes to some humans when possible. All right, we're going to take the Snare Caster here pretty happily. That fits in with what we're trying to do. And it's a satisfactory card. All right, we can take the Rambler now. We can also take Ray of Dissolution, which is certainly main deckable, but we're short on creatures, so I think we're just going to slam the, slam the Rambler and continue. Um, Jake and I were talking in the podcast about... Uh, which is I actually getting good because of Inspired. But obviously we're not the Inspired deck beyond the Sun Guide. But if you have a ton of Inspired guys, I could see Which is I being really good. Uh, let's take the Rambler here once again over the Last Breath. Last Breath's fine, but, you know, it's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get in with... I don't really like Ramblers that much. I mean, obviously they're, they're just not that impressive. But uh, considering how short we are on creatures currently... Just got to make sure we get enough. All right, we could take the Griffin. I think we'll just take the Portent. Really got to focus fire on two and three drop creatures in this uh, next pack here. Really got to keep our eyes open for some humans. Otherwise, we're not going to get value off this Pegasus. And it's going to make me wish I took the Stone Shock Giant. But I'd like to not uh, not have to worry about that. All right, there we go. Got a Traveling Philosopher. The fact that Arbor Colossus Wield is probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen. This card is 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 so strong. It's That's crazy to me. I guess just no deep green players. It, it does seem like... The, the funny thing is everybody, it feels like, wants to go into red-white now. You know? Because, like I said, it, it really is... It just plays so easily such an easy archetype to draft it's such an easy archetype to have mediocre i mean look how mediocre this this build just got with this pack and i still am not even that worried i've i've won with worse than this i've lost with better than this so 
it's like not even a major concern if you don't draft a great looking pool in red white. Uh, I guess we could take a second portent. I, I doubt we are playing both of them, but just in case. And nothing really good here. Take that. I think we're going to let our opponents play the uh, loathsome Cato Blay Pass. I, yes, I still can't pronounce that card right. Okay, I don't know how it's pronounced. All right, well, hopefully we can clean up in pack three here. Let's get some value off of this Calvary Pegasus. I'm looking for cheap heroic guys. The Phalanx Leader would have been so good in here. You know, the card that I took the, the Thoughtseize over. Uh, yeah, the Phalanx Leader in here would have been devastating for our opponents. But uh, what can I say? I'm a sucker for tickets. If these were all free, I would draft... I would draft the best every time, I think. I would just draft the best card for the archetype I'm trying to pursue. Not the best card necessarily in the pack. Oh, well, got a Fire Drinker Seder, who is a one-drop, two-power guy. I think that's what this deck wants. Uh, unfortunately, because Flame Speaker Adept is great, too. I mean, I could just take the Adept because it's human. Works better with the Pegasus. How much Scry stuff do we have already? We've got one... Maybe we don't have that much scry. And then I'll feel better about it. Oh, both of these scry too. Jeez. And those scry. All right. Well, I mean, Adept would be good in here, but I, I can't really deny a one-drop creature that's got two power. I think that's more in line with what we're trying to do here. So, um, yeah, we're going to take the Seder. Hope to wheel that uh, Adept. I don't know how realistic that is, but we'll see. Okay, and unfortunately, nothing that great for us here. I think we're just going to slam the Snarecaster. Deathbell Raider's good too, but Snarecaster actually uh, screws over your opponent. So I like this one a little bit more. We are rapidly getting to the point where we can make this a um, 16 land deck. Our curve is pretty low, which is good. So ideally we're going to be cutting this giant. I'd like to cut the raptor. I don't mind playing the portents, but uh, I'd prefer to find better for them too. All right. Well, well, Boon Seder. Ooh, well, good news. Best card we could possibly ask for. So here we go. We're going to take Wing Seed Rider. And is there... Any chance at all that we wheel Spear Point or Divine Verdict? Spear Point, possibly. I don't know. I, I actually don't think this pack's super deep since we've seen green picks going the whole time. Somebody's going to have a wicked, wicked green deck. Um, ooh, well, here's good news. Dauntless Onslaught is probably, probably the best uncommon I could have asked for for this, for this deck. And we didn't even get much heroic at all. How much did we get? Just this guy? I think that is literally the only heroic guy we got, which sucks. Oh, wait, now we have this guy. So we do have a couple, thankfully. Um, but that's such an important part of this deck, too. But that's okay. Dauntless Onslaught just made this deck about 100,000 times better. All right. Obviously take an Arena Athlete here. It's a human. It's got heroic. It's got a relevant heroic ability. Everything about Arena Athlete in this deck is right Hopeful Eidolon would be good, too, since it's very good against us, but still happily slamming that card. All right. Uh, I mean, Satessan Battle Priest is playable. I don't really like it all that much, but, I mean, it seems like it's something that we could do. It is human. It's decent against us. I'll take it. All right. Sweet. Got a Skull Cleaver here. Nothing else that's really in line with what we're trying to do. Uh, nothing in here is super important, so we're going to take the glare for sideboard purposes. And Borderland Mantar is actually pretty damn playable, so we'll slam him. 
and any of these cards matter. Not particularly. Doesn't seem like anybody's green, so we don't have to worry about that. Maybe we stop the rampy decks a little bit. Uh, didn't wheel anything we wanted, unfortunately. Um, we'll just hate the... I guess Blood Toll is not even that good against us. Cost three, it's clunky, it only has one toughness, it makes them lose life. I guess the Felhide Minotaur is probably the most dangerous, because it's a good blocker against us. Um, deck's still fine. I think we're actually going to be okay with this deck. It's a little bit more mediocre than even I'm used to. We're definitely hating the return phalanx. But uh, there's, there's certainly enough cards in here to win. Certainly enough cards to win. So we're going to play a 16 land deck. Um, this is about where I'm at with it now. Just need to cut like one more card. And we're going to have ourselves a just fine red-white 6 out of 10 deck. Alright. Well, we'll see if we play that green deck round one, huh? They're going to be pretty solid. But, uh, yeah, like I said, this this is okay. I'm actually not uh, not terribly disappointed with this deck. I think there's enough tools to uh, get there. The nice thing about Fall the Hammer, too, is it triggers Heroic. Another beautiful aspect of that card. As if there wasn't enough going on for it. Okay, and this guy, yep. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess we can consider Battle Priest. A little bit short on... A little bit short on uh, humans. But we actually did end up getting some, so... That's good. Let's... Wow, plenty of two-drop creatures. Pretty good three and four drop, but... Okay. Uh, so, need to cut one card. Presumably a creature. I actually like our spell suit quite a bit. All of this stuff. Um, I mean, I, I could consider cutting Chosen since it doesn't uh, aggressively. I guess, yeah, I guess I could do that. Then I have to think about how many... All right, how many heroic guys do I have? That's the real question. One, three total, right? Two, three. No other ones? Oh, uh, I guess Battle Priest kind of is too, but... Uh, it's such an underwhelming heroic ability. Uh, I guess technically I could cut the Battle Priest because it's not really what our deck's trying to do. It synergizes well with Pegasus. It's a decent blocker, but does our deck really look like a deck that wants to block? We're, we're more of the Seder Rambler, let's just get in there sort of deck. So I think Battle Priest is probably out, which leaves us with 16 creatures. Still got good heroic cards to trigger heroic, I mean. Um, yeah, this is this is straight up like a 6 out of 10, a deck that could steal a draft, honestly. Uh, is there anything I'm missing, first and foremost? Good sideboard. Not that good. Sideboard, maybe. Importance for sideboard, for sure. Um, I mean, technically, I could swap important and a chosen and then I still have ardor strength fall dauntless temper to target my three heroic guys plus this plus this I've probably got enough let's do the portent because stealing any of the if we play against any sort of mid-range deck this this card can be crippling if we play against aggro it's a little bit underwhelming so we can always sideboard out of it um yeah i think i'm ready to play it like this why don't we check out our color almost dead even so we're gonna just even it up i think and they recommend the same um i mean we need everything early so yeah this deck's about six out of ten could easily steal a draft uh let's see if we do i'll see you round one